What's the worst <laughs> prison sentence you can give to a gay man? Okay, guys, 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 let's. Uh, <laughs> okay, guys, let's let's concentrate. Let's start our let's start our practicals. Okay, um, I'm going to minimize this because I posted it yesterday, right? Huh? Okay, this is our server manager. Now, what I'm going to do is simple. I'm going to start with the first uh, aspect of, uh, of the server system. Remember, I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at the two uh, last objectives, 4.1 and 5.1. It's talking about uh, logical active directory and the physical active directory. Now, the logical aspect is where we talk about forest because forest is something logical, right? Where we say one server is the head, and monitors the rest of the server. Is that not correct? That's why we have one domain name, but we can have sub other domains depending on that domain. Then we talk about uh, Active Directory site where we can link two servers together. Now, when we talk about the physical aspect of Active Directory, we're looking at physical point where physical server resides and how it connects to them. And that is where you have site link. Remember site link with replication where it replicates one a content from one server system to another. So the first demonstration I'm going to be looking at, because I'm just going to work with demonstrations, and I will explain. So I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, designing and implementing Active Directory Domain Forest Infrastructure. Now let's say, for example, I want to implement Active Directory Forest. Now we all know that to install a forest, uh, you have to set up an Active Directory Domain Controller. Is that not correct? But let's say I want to set up an Active Directory, an Active Directory Domain Forest. Now, how do you set up an Active Directory Domain Forest? Let's say I want to, uh, I want to connect to Cessa server. Let's say I have a, a server from Cessa. Let, let me let me check this. Uh, if I check my computer now, let me just be sure what network adapters I have. I have two network adapters here. Oh, I'm I'm also running, um, I'm running a. Uh, I'm running uh, I'm running a, D, a local DHCP server. Are we together? Now, if, if, if for instance, let's say I have one of my network adapter which is actually connected to the outside. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be setting up a forest trust with Cessa. Okay. Um, let me see. Can we add? Can we uh, add uh, additional network? Is it possible? We have to shut down. Okay. okay let me. Uh, let me. Can can one of you, uh, Cesar, Do you have your domain running? A domain running. Do you have your server running? Can you do what I'm doing? Uh, uh, replace one of your servers with a bridge adapter. I want you guys to watch what I'm doing. And use the wireless port. Okay. Use the wireless port. Then, okay, then let's see if it will get um, IP address. Let me get IP address from network plus two. I'm going to connect to network plus two. So my, my computer becomes public. Huh? Are we together? Yeah, my computer becomes public. Let me just wait, I, because I will need, a, I will need a, a DACP server to give me an IP address. Okay, no, this is wrong, so let me... Let me uh, Disable it and enable it again so that it can give me IP address for network plus two. So do this, do what I'm doing so that that second network adapter gets IP address from network plus two so that I can connect to you. So that I can explain to the class how a uh, forest works. So my, my IP address now is 116. Are you seeing it? Okay, do exactly what I do. Confirm that you have IP address from your second network adapter, which is Ethernet 2. Okay? Okay, guys. Now, what I want to do, uh, what I want to show you is how uh, an administrator sets up how you can set up a trust between two server systems. We're talking about Active Directory Forest Trust. When you check your book, you'll be able to uh, get to that. So the first thing I will need to do is to create 
to create a, 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 a DNS. I need to create a DNS record for uh, CSS server. Are we together? Huh? Okay, CSS, can I have your IP address of your server so that I can ping it? So that I'm sure that I can be able to get to your server system. Okay, can somebody do exactly what I do as well? I need, I need a computer to work with for the forest so that I can explain this. Can somebody change one of his network adapter bridge? Then it will disconnect, it will try to connect, but make sure your host computer is connected to network plus two. Then you give me the IP address so that I can communicate. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. So that I can communicate to somebody. You see, we don't have time. That's my problem. Just change one of the network adapter, make it bridge. It will automatically change immediately. It will disconnect, connect again, and it will be active. I want to show you how Forest Trust work. Uh, so that it's We'll see how it works within a, a, a real uh, what is that, uh, environment. Okay, can I have the IP address? Huh? 117. So it's 192.168.5.117. Okay, guys, I can ping his computer, right? So the next thing I'm going to be doing, I'll go and create a DNS record for his computer. Huh? Don't worry, I'm doing my recording. So I'll go to tools, I'll go to DNS. I will expand my DNS. So the next thing I need to do is to create, uh, what I'm gonna be doing now, I'm gonna be creating a, I'm gonna create a conditional forwarder because I'm deliberately wanting to connect to where? To his computer, are you getting me? I'm, so I'm gonna be creating a, a conditional forwarder. So on my DNS server, which is my server one here, I'm going to um, go to my server system, can you see conditional forwarders here? So I'm going to right click. I'm going to say new condition. So I'm going to type his um, IP address or I can type his domain name. So its IP address is 192. Oh, sorry, his domain name. What's your domain name? You should know your domain name. You don't need to go there to look at it. You should know your domain name, local server. Yes? Excuse me? Server. Excuse me? Win server. Yes. server dot local. Okay. So I'm going to type um, the IP address here 192.168.5.117. I'm going to click anywhere. It's going to try to resolve. It says attempting to resolve. I'll click OK. So that's the record. Uh, let me go back again to the property just to be sure if he's able to resolve. Is he, is he resolved now? You see the, the, the good map, right? Meaning I'm able to talk to him. OK. Now, that's the conditional forward I've done now. The next thing I'm going to do is to try to do NS lookup to his server. To his, de to his domain server system, meaning the server, the, the server name, and the domain name. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my PowerShell. I'm going to type nslookup. nslookup. Uh, can I have your, your server name? What's your, your computer name, the server name? Win. Oui. Win seventy dash four four thirteen. That would be dot win server dot local, right? Okay. And let's look up. Let's see. Okay. It's a no authoritative answer, but he gave us. You see the IP address he gave to us. Ah, uh, six dot one. 
Huh? Is that your is that the IP address you have on your computer? Is that your, your IP address range? 6.1. But remember, I'm connected to him with what? 192.168.5.117. But because that IP address 117 is not the authoritative. So the one who is the authoritative is what? 6.1. It gave me that information. Are we together? Okay. So I think I can get to his computer. And um, that, is, that is also correct as well. So I want him to do as well the same thing on, on his computer. Can you go to your computer? Go to uh, the uh, PowerShell. Go to your PowerShell computer. Now, I want you to do NS lookup so that you can pick my computer. NS lookup, then MCSE, NS lookup <coughs> space, MCSE, MCSE dot MCE dot local. Then see if it gives you a response. MCE. Yeah, it's on the board, yeah. MCE dot local. <coughs> Remember, these two server systems should be able to talk to each other first. Before you can set up what? A trust. Huh? Okay. Was it did they give you an authoritative response? Or non-authoritative response? I think on his computer it's timing out. So, okay, what he needs to do is to also create the same. Um, um, what he needs to do. Okay, can you do the same thing I did? Let me just let me do it. So, what I need to do is to go to his computer, go to DNS. Okay. Watch what I'm doing. I'm going to his own computer. I need to do exactly the same thing I did on my computer. Yes, yes. So I'll go to his DNS server. Go to conditional forwarder. Right click. Create new forwarder. Uh, my domain name is mce.local. I'll come in here and type my IP address, which is 192.168.5.116.
Okay, I think my DNS is timing out there, but I think I'll be able to communicate with him now. Huh? Um, some of the times it means maybe firewall settings and things like that. Okay, the next task I'm going to be doing, please one class, one class, guys, one class. The next class, the next thing I'm going to be doing is to create a trust between me and him. Are you getting me? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to tools. I'm going to go to Active Directory Domains and what? Trust. Remember, this is a logic Active Directory implementation. So I'm going to expand this. Currently, I don't have a trust. Are we, are we, are you, are we together? So I'm going to right click here. I'll go to Properties. I will go to Trust. And I will come here and say what? New Trust. So I'll click Next. Then it says, Type the name of the domain, forest, or the realm for this trust. Are you getting me? Meaning you can create a, uh, a trust by using the NetBIOS or the DNS name. So he said I should type the name of the domain, the forest, or the realm for this trust. If you type the name of a forest, you must type the DNS name. You can see an example here. Huh? Okay, so uh, the trust I'm going to be creating is for my server. So I'm going to be typing... Um, mce dot local because I'm the ad going trust. Huh? Sorry, just a minute. Sorry, what's your domain name again? Win dot local. <coughs> Okay, let's wait. He's trying to talk to it. So you, that's a, you, you was, I was supposed to type the partner server name on, on this place because that's who I'm creating a trust with. Now it has talked to it. Now, you know, REM trust, this is for non-Windows computers. Are you getting me? So uh, I'm going to be trusting a Windows computer which the domain is this. So I'm going to click next. What's going on at the wizard? Why? I can't contact you. I usually had this problem last time. Because I wanted us to go through that level. Win server dot local. Definitely, to trust mine is already trusted. Try again. Win, win server dot local. Okay, is a domain trust. So it's a, we are actually having a DNS problem here, and that's why it's not going through. Okay. Normally, when that wizard goes through, I'm going to be configuring the trust between my server and the server system. So both of us are actually going to be talking to each other. I think where I'm having a problem, it's because of my 
I have two networks here that are cor uh, currently active on my system. So that is why going out, maybe the connection coming in from there, it's talking to the 6 1. Uh, and the 6 1 is not responding to me. Are we together? Yeah. The six because the six one is not responding to me. Let me let me try something. Let's uh, let's take the six one out of this. Let's let's try one more time. Let's see if everything will go through. Let's try one more time. Just trying to see if that will go through. But before, for if I wanted to do best, if I wanted to make sure this thing is working, I would have run two server systems. Then it would have been perfect. Now, if I had two server systems on the same local network, then it would be perfect. Ah, it's fine. Okay. Um, that is for that is for the sites. So the wizard comes up and it asks you to go through the the outgoing and incoming. So what is going to happen? The moment I join my server with this computer, they will both appear here. Then we'll have a transitive trust. If it's if it's two way. So when I click OK, his server will not be on my computer. So when I go to Active Directory, I can add users from his computer to my computer. And its users will be able to log in into my desktop. <coughs> Do you understand me? His own user at windserver.local will be able to log in into my desktop. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is um, is the Active Directory infrastructure. We'll be looking at implementing uh, um, of course we all know how to install Active Directory. I don't need to go through those steps again. Um, the next step I want to show you is how to set up Active Directory OU, organizational units. So let's say you have an organizational unit. Uh, it's called the uh, Central IT. The Central IT also have admin accounts. Are you getting me? And under admin account, under admin account, you also have groups. Are we together? Meaning you have, just I don't have a marker here. You have, um, you have central IT here. Are you getting me? You have admin accounts connected to central IT. Then you also have groups coming down from where? Admin accounts. So central IT's admin accounts, you have groups. So let's say you have enterprise, you have servers, on servers, you have another group of servers called SQL Server. You also have uh, WS servers and, of course, app servers. I'll show you what I'm trying to talk about. So our task here, what I want to do now, what I want to demonstrate for you, remember I'm trying to look at how to set up OUs. There's something I want to do. I want to use um, a PowerShell to actually configure an Active Directory OU, to create an Active Directory OU. Just follow the command. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to type um, new dash a d o of that's organizational organizational sorry a l units space dash name space OU dash name space dash path double hyphen parent DN close the hyphen comma like hyphen again OU equals Users, comma, DC equals, so my domain name is um, MCE, comma, DC equals local, 
Then I put the double command. Okay, press enter. Okay, I actually had a problem last time I did it with my student because of uh, uh, because of the 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 DC the DC uh, the DC uh, extension, which is uh, the dot local. I actually had problem creating this uh, record, but I think um, if you were to put something like dot call, um, normally it will it will go through. Are we together? Yeah, but normally in the normal scenario, that is the command. There's nothing you need to add there. We didn't, we were never missed, we didn't miss anything there. Everything is exactly the way it should be. It's just that domain, that is not a domain name. We are saying this is a DC means domain. This is dot local. Are you getting me? It's a local server system. So we'll just, you, you, we'll just use a normal, yeah, we'll just use a normal way of uh, creating it. Because we don't have any server parents as .com. Okay, just clear this. Okay, um, now watch what I'm going to be doing now. Um, I'm going to go to the OU. I want to teach you how to logically create OUs in an Active Directory. Okay, let's say we have um, an OU. I don't think, do we have paint here? Do we have paint here on the uh, server 2012? Uh, do we have paint? We have paint, eh? Okay, let me use paint to draw. Okay, let me use paint to do, do the drawing. Okay, we have a server here. Uh, we have uh, we have a group here, and oh, you we have an additional unit called C I T. Are we together? Central IT. Now on this central IT, we have admin group. Okay? We have admin. Hmm? We have admin groups. Okay, after that, on this same IT, we have a line coming here. I'm trying to give you a diagram that you might be giving. We have groups. We have groups. Okay, another implementation. We have another OU here. Remember, it's also on the parent. This OU is called um, Enterprise. Let me just bring it up here, okay. This OU is called Enterprise. Enterprise. Then on that OU we have we have um, servers. And remember you'll be giving this diagram as illustration. If you're going to be working in an in a, in a more uh, bigger organization. Let me expand this so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. On that note, we have um, from here, not from here again, you can see the, you can see the, the, the chain. This is not, this one is, a, this server is the parent of enterprise. So the rest of them now come under what? Servers. Can you see? So from here we have one, we have two, and we have what? Three. So here we have SQL, here we have web server, and here we have apps. So I come here and write web, SQL, SQL, and apps. Now you might be giving this diagram to set up a structure of a company's Active Directory. Are you getting me? So that is how you can, if they said, 
Uh, we want the web servers, the SQL servers, to be on the servers. The servers should be under what? Enterprise. Are we together? Okay, let's just work with that. Then I'm going to show you how to also add description to the Active Directory. So let's go to Active Directory. I can minimize this. Let's go to Active Directory. So I'm going to come to the parent. This is the parent, right? The main domain. So I'm going to come to new. I'm going to say organizational units. Then I'm going to type central. IT. I can uncheck accidental deletion. Central IT. So I'll click OK. Did you see Central IT? Huh? Okay. Let's go to the property. You see description here. Did you see description? So my description here, I will type admin account and groups for delegation. Administer from domain admins only. I click apply, I click OK. If you want to see this content, uh, we we'll go to view. Let's see um, advanced features. Central IT. Then we'll be able to show you all the contents. If you right click, you go to view properties. You see the what? The descriptions there. Huh? Did you see the descriptions there? Okay, let's do that for. Let's continue with the, di the diagram we drew. Huh? Remember the diagram we drew? Admit group and what? Groups. Is that not correct? So we go to central IT and do the creating now. So we go to central IT. We go to new. We say what? Organizational units. Then we type admin groups. We check as letter deletion. We click OK. We come again to Central IT, New, Organizational Units, Groups. Okay. Now, let me show you something else. Let's go to Active Directory Administrative Center. Let's go to Tools, go to Active Directory Administrative Center, sorry. Now let's go to our MCSE, expand it, expand Now did you see that description we, we put in there? Can you see that description? 
Did you see the description there? Admin, uh, can you see it? What we typed earlier on. Admin accounts and groups for what? Delegations. If you double click on it, you see you see the you see them here. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do the other one. Let me bring the diagram up so that you can see. The diagram says enterprise, servers, web server, SQL, and what? Apps. Are we together? So to create that, we can come in here. We go to the main domain system. We go to new, OU, and we call it what? Enterprise. Is that not correct? Mm -hmm. Enterprise, uncheck as data deletion, click OK. Now, under Enterprise, we are supposed to create what? Servers. So we we'll go to New, OU, we we'll call this what? Servers. Uncheck Accidental Deletion again, click OK. Now, under Servers, so we're not going to create it under Enterprise anymore. We're not create it under what? Servers. So we'll go to Servers, and we'll now say Web. So that's a web server. We go to servers again. SQL. We check. We go to servers again. Then we type apps. And check. So that is a structure. This is a structure, uh, a logical structure way of arranging your what Active Directory. So all the servers, you cannot put them in here and allocate policies to each of these servers using your group policy settings. Are we together? Based on the diagram I've just drawn now. Huh? Okay. The next thing I wanted to look at is... Um, Okay, normally there's a way you actually can migrate user. Like I can, you can export users from there. I can bring them into the server, my server now. I can import the users as well. Then I can change all their settings and information. So that's another logical way as well of moving uh, users. You can also use group policy to do the imports. Okay, the next thing I want to look at it's um, uh, Active Directory permission model because we're looking at logical aspects, huh? Okay, let's say, for example, I have a task here. Um, like, recently we created the IT, the ITOU. Yeah, the central ITOU. So let's create a kind of a group that is required to use the ITOU. So go to the organizational unit of ITOU. Actually, uh, best, uh, um, most, most people with server 2012 will prevent administrative center. Are you getting me? Huh? So we can go to administrative center, we'll click on central IT. Then we are asked to create required groups. So we go to the panel for groups. We don't have any group here, is that not correct? Huh? Do we have any group? Okay, so let's create a group here. Let's say new. We say group. Okay, the name of our group is uh, Ventuk. Hmm? Ventuk dash user group provisioning. Okay, of course, we accept the default. It's a global group, it's a security group. Uh, we don't have any other extra information to put in, but you can always put uh, other information like you can add members to this group as well. Huh? This is where you add the members. Then this is where the group is a member of. Okay? Have you done that? Click OK. The next group, let's go to new. 
Our next group will be Enterprise. Dash server OPS. Are we together? Then we click OK. The next group is Marketing Admin. Marketing Admins is Global Security Group. Click OK. And the last group, it's um, the last group will be Ven uh, Ventuk Admins. Then we click on OK. OK. Okay, let's create a local group. So go to new, we'll type on group, we'll type um, ACL underscore, put the name of your domain. My name of my domain is MCE dash users underscore CCDC. They call them domain local group. Huh? Domain local group. Yeah, call it domain local group. Then click OK. Okay, those are domain local group we've been playing, but uh, creating one is okay. We can do more. If you're asked to do more, you can always do more later. Okay, now, how do you delegate permissions to the, to, to you know, these groups now, you want to delegate permissions to them. Though they are admins, but they can actually be tasked to do different things. Are we together? So, to delegate groups is very easy. So let's go to uh, our domain. Can we go back to our domain? Click back on your domain here. So let's go to users. Let's go to users. Did you see the user container there? Okay, click on it. Just click on it. Then on the right, you see property. Huh? Click on property. Have you clicked on property? Huh? Okay, let's go to extension. Now you see all the permissions there, right? Huh? Did you see all these permissions that are there? Okay. Now in this task, we're going to use advanced security uh, policy. What we're going to do, we're going to try to check, take out some objects from this user so that they don't have certain rights in certain aspects. So to do that, we go to the security tab. Then you click on advance. Of course, you see allow, allow, allow. Do you see all the allow there? Huh? So that is the permission. Now in this task, what we want to do, we want to select a principal uh, permission for each of the user. Remember we created a user, a, a domain local group recently, right? The AC underscore our domain. The group we created earlier on. So what we're going to do, we're going to select a principal for that group so that the, that group has a, a, a special permission to carry out certain tasks within the server system. Now, this is logical. You're not physically telling these people you, this is what you have. The computer will tell them when they try to use the system. That is a logical part of the server. So what we're going to do, we're going to select uh, permissions. Uh, can we go to the permission tab? Did you see the add button? 
Can you click Add? Did you see Select Principal? Mm -hmm. Select it. So we're going to type L A C L. Uh, check names. Because that's the only SCL we have. Yeah, whether it's a group or a user, if it was a group or a user, it will pop up and it will give us a selection. But it's only the one we have. So that's a group. So I'm going to select that uh, group and click OK. Did you see the type there? What is the type this? Is, this? is it allowed? Huh? Is it allowed? OK. Now if you scroll down, did you see there are other permissions that are there? Did you see permissions? You see a lot of permissions yes. by default. So what I want you to do, I want you to click on this clear all. Can you click on that? Because this is a default permission assigned to them. So we want to clear all the permissions. Then there is no permission. So only what we specify here will stay for life. Pertaining this user, concerning, concerning this server system. Are, are we together? Okay. So let's go to the, um, let's go back. Um, let's go to the permission. You see the permissions tab here, right? Okay, on that permission tab, did you see create users and delete user? Did you see create user objects and delete user objects? Huh? Create user objects. You screw down. That should be you. Did you see create user objects here? Click on it and delete user objects. Okay. Can you click OK? Of course, it's an allowed, huh? So click OK. Did you see their permissions there? Huh? But let's go to normal authenticated users. You see, normal authenticated user is what? Special, right? You see, other users are just specials. But this particular group, they are not administrators, but they can create users and they can also what? Delete users. Are, you, are we together? Okay. Make sure you follow what I'm doing. Okay. Click apply. Click OK. Then come here and click cancel. Okay. That's what we've just done. You can also use the command like this car to also create that, but we can always do that later on. Okay, um, what else again do I want to do with you guys? Um, GPO, I believe most of us uh, by now should know how to uh, inst um, set up a group policy object. Uh, some of you don't know. Okay, let's go to the group policy. Let's go to the server manager. We'll go to tools. Then we go to the group policy, what? Management console. Now remember, we're still talking about the logical aspect of the server system, whereby we don't physically restrict these people, we are logically restricting them so that when they use the computer, the permission will work, will be more effective. Okay, in this lab, we're gonna set up a group policy settings and link them to group policy, uh, to domain content, to our uh, domain uh, controller, or any organizational unit within the domain controller. Now, that is your group policy. If you notice there, by default, it says forest. Now, if you expand it, you have domains. Is that not correct? And you only have only one domain. Is that not correct? Now, if you check it also as well, you notice you have a default domain policy. Now, some of you may be wondering, is this the only policy I have? Let's find out. If you go to the group policy object, you will notice you have two policies here. Default domain controller policy and what? Default domain what? Because those are the only two policies you have.
Okay, now we're going to create a new GPO. Are we together? Hmm? Are we together? And we're going to use this GPO to configure automatic update for clients, whereby this policy will be applied where users will be forced to, uh, uh, their computers will be forced to automatically update every time there's a Windows update. Huh? Okay. So pay attention to what I'm going to do now. So the task I'm going to be doing now is to set up a group policy. So let's go to the group policy objects. Can you right click on it? And click what? New. I want you to call the name all underscore clients. Clients. There's an S. Hmm? Now, normally, whenever you create a GPO, you want to link it. Huh? But no, we are currently, we don't have a starter GPO. You guys remember what starter GPO is, right? A blank slate of group policy GPO. Are you getting me? It's like a blank slate. So it's like a template you set up. Then when you want to create a GPO, you create it or with a starter GPO so that you can now, you start afresh with your configuration. But whatever we are doing now, we are creating just a normal blank GPO based on our normal GPO we have on our system. Are we together? So I'll click on uh, OK. OK, that's our GPO there. All clients, it's set up. Is that not correct? OK. Let's click on it, right click, and say edit. So what we are editing now, it's all client GPO, not our default domain policy GPO. OK, go to computer, computer configuration, and click on expand policies. And go to Windows security settings. Go to Windows security settings. That's Windows settings, then you go to security. Did you see restricted group there? Did you see restricted group under security settings? Do we currently have any restricted group? Okay, then we can right click and say add a group. Okay, type administrators. Type administrators. Then click on OK. It's a name. Are you getting me? Yeah. Huh? It's not administrator we're restricting. It's a name we are just giving. But we want to restrict specific administrators or people who are administrators. But they will be put on a restricted group. Okay. The next step we're going to do now is to put members to this group. Okay, can you click on um, members of this group? Click add. Do we have IT? Hmm? Do we have IT groups? Hmm? Let's click on browse. Do we have IT in our computer? Server IT. Central IT. No, that's not a group. That's an organizational unit. Okay, we don't have a group. So can we go to our computer? Let's create a group called, uh, we can go to the uh, administrative center. Okay, let's go to central IT. Let's go to groups, then click on add another, sorry. Click on new group, then type IT. Hmm. So let's go to the group policy. So if I check names now, it will work. Hmm. So click OK, then click OK. The group has now been added. Huh? You click Apply, and you click OK. OK, we've done restricted group. 
So what um, these groups now will be restricted from certain, carrying out certain aspects as you know as administrators, even though they have administrative rights. Are you getting me? Uh, that's why we have put them restricted. Okay. The next task is to update our windows. So let's go to steal our computer configuration, close window settings, then go to administrative templates, expand it, go to Windows components, then let's look for uh, Windows updates. That should be close to the last, that should be last actually. So in this, la in this um, settings, we want to turn on automatic updates. Yeah, I want to turn on automatic updates. So let's uh, screw this. You know, you can always click on standard so that you can see whatever is going on here. The idea for extended is to actually see the description. So you can always click on standard. So can you click configure automatic updates? Double click on it. Configure automatic updates. Double click on it. Then click enable. Okay, our first option here says we should select for auto download and to schedule. So we go to number four, which is auto download and schedule the what? Install. Okay. So because we say schedule, we have to put what is our schedule. Is that not correct? Mm -hmm. So our schedule by default, it's what? Every day. Every Tuesday, every Wednesday. So let's say we can take it for what? Every Friday. At three, of course, this is mid this is midnight, right? Why this is in the morning? So we can say from twelve. If you say from uh, from this time, this one is what? In the afternoon. So we can say zero zero, which is twelve midnight. Are we together? Because zero 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 is twelve midnight. So we can click on apply and click on OK. So we want, there are certain people who want to have this update. Now, who are, normally when you create an update like this, who are the people that this should affect? Your client's computer system, is that not correct? Huh? Let's say, for example, you, have, you are working in a company whereby the client's computers are not on. They are not, they do not go off every evening. They only just log out. They come back the next morning, they just log in. So in such scenario, you want to what? Have their system update overnight. Are you getting me? Even though you have a WS US server. It pushes the update there, then the client can do the update. So let's close the console. Let's go back to the group policy settings. So it is loading. So expand the group policy settings. Let's confirm if the permissions we have set are, are actually correct. So let's click on click on all client settings. Go to settings. Look at it here. Go to settings. It's generating a report. Uh, click on add. That's just for security for your web browser. Say expand all. You will notice that the two settings we set, they are actually enabled. Can you see? This is a report telling you that what you have configured is what? It's, co it's, it's, it's correct. Are we together? Yeah. So this is what we've set up and everything, it's, um, it's correct. Okay, the next thing is to link the GPO. Okay, we have, a, we have um, an OU called um, test. We also have an OU called enterprise. Are we together? On enterprise, we have servers. On servers, we have what? apps. So I want us to create um, enterprise. I want us to create client computers. So we're going to call client and we're going to say uh, uh, we are Windows Windows Workstation. So what I want us to do, let's go back to the administrative center. We go to domain. We click on new because it's a parent. We click on new. We say uh, we need to create an uh, OU, so we'll come to the down here. This is under the domain. So we'll go to organizational units. We'll type um, clients. 
then we'll say uh, Windows 7, 8, and Windows 7, 8, Windows 7 and 8 work stations. And we together on check accidental deletion, then click OK. So next we go to the client OU, then we go to new, we go to organizational units, then we'll call this one Windows 7. Okay, we click OK. So now our OU we want Windows 7 systems to be what? To update automatically. Are we together? So what I'm going to do now, I'll go back to my group policy. Uh, you can come here and refresh. Huh? You see, uh, refresh so that we can have our client's OU up here. Is the client OU now there? Huh? Is it there? Because what I did, I refreshed, I closed, I opened again. Refreshed and the client will use there. So we want to link this GPO to Windows 7. So we're going to right click on this GPO and we're going to say what? Sorry. We're going to come to the group policy. The GPO currently is not linked. If you come to clients, you see there's no GPO that is linked here. Is that not correct? Huh? Now, we're going to right click on client, we say link an existing what? GPO. But that is not what we want to do. We don't, we don't want to link the GPO to client. We want to link it to Windows 7. So we expand and we click on Windows 7. So we right click and say link, link an existing GPO. So we select clients and we click on what? Okay. Now, if you come to Windows 7 now, you see the first GPO. For Windows 7 is what? It's all clients. If you go to clients here, you see that no GPO is linked here. So it's only having group policy inheritance. From who? Group policy inheritance from where? The default what? Domain. But if you look at Windows 7, Windows 7 has what? A GPO link, which is order number what? One. Are you seeing it? Now, if you come back to group policy inheritance, it's also inheriting uh, policies from who? It's also a heritage policy from where? From the default what? Domain policy. If you block inheritance, can you see block inheritance? Right click on the Windows 7, say block inheritance. If you block inheritance, you'll notice there's only one policy that is that is that Windows 7 client uses, which is what? All clients. Are we together? So the default domain policy has no business to do with what? Windows 7. Of course, all you need to do is to uncheck it and it's back. It can inherit policies from there. Okay. Guys, um, uh, that is for the GPO logical uh, uh, presentation I wanted to show to you. Um, now, we look. let's look at... Uh, there's, only one, there's one thing I wanted to show you that is for delegation. Uh, that is the physical aspect of server systems. I will show you the delegations and uh, sites. That's the last thing I'm going to look at now. Huh? So I'm going to minimize this. Now let's say, for example, I have two sites. I have a site in Kobabes. I have a site in Katima. I have a site in Oshakati. Now how do you set up a site? It's simple. Remember, the idea for site is for one reason, replication. Are we together? That's one reason. That's the idea we set up a site for replication. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the server manager. I'm going to go to tools. Now, did you see Active Directory Sites and Services? Huh? Okay, can you click on it?
Is the site open? Hmm? Now expand it. Did you see you have your default site there? Huh? You remember when we set up Active Directory, it calls this site default first site. Are we together? But you can rename it. Huh? Okay. So now, if you notice, on that default first site, did you see servers there? Now expand it. You now saw your, you see your, your domain name, which is MCS, the computer name. Now if you expand it, you now see NTDS settings. Now this NTDS settings is for your what? For the server, which is this, MCSE. Are we together? Huh? Okay. So let's say I want to change this site. All you need to do is just, you can just click on it like this, or you can click on it, and you can say what? Rename. You can call this one main. You can say main site or main office because you don't because the sites you are main office. Now there's a problem here. It says a site name cannot contain space or any dash or can you see? Huh? So in this case, we need to create a new site. Are you getting me? Are we, are we together? So I'm going to leave this default site. Then I'm going to come to my site. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say what? New what? New site. So I'm going to call this site main office. Then it's going to ask me, who do you want to link it to? So if I have multiple sites, I will also get them here. It will, I can link all the sites. But I only have one default site, right? Which is my main server. So I will say link to the default site what? Link. I'll click OK. But there's still a problem here. It's still telling me that there must be a dash. So what I can do, I can come in here and I can put a main dash what? Office. It says the main dash office has been created. It says to finish this, ensure that this site is linked to what? Other site link as what? Appropriate. Add the subnet. Remember I talked about subnet with site. It uses the subnet for what? Replication. Then it's also... This site should actually have more than one domain, or you can move domains to it as well, so that replication can occur. So I'll click OK. Can you see the site there? OK. Can you see? We don't have any server here, right? Huh? So can we add some servers here? So we only have one server in our computer, right? So let's say, for example, we can click on, um, on uh, View. You can go to New. You can say Server. Can you see servers here? So we can add the name of a particular server that we know about. Or we can move a server here. Are you getting me? So what I can do, I can come to my main site here, expand the servers. I can right click, sorry. Right click, I can say what? Move. I can now move this server to where? This site. So I can have multiple sites. But how do you configure the site? You go to the site settings, which is the name of the site. Are you getting me? You right click and you go to what? Properties. Now this is where you have locations, objects of the site, security with permissions, and attributes. But if you want to conf configure the site for replication, remember we have site link and site cost. So what I need to do, I will come to the NTDS what? Settings of the site. I will click on the site, NTDS settings. I will double click on it. Now, this is where you now have, can you see change schedule? Huh? If you click on change schedule, did you see how you can do your replication? Huh? Where you can set up how long you want to replicate. So from Sunday to, you can see it's once per hour. You can see that's why you have dot, dot, dot. If you want two hours, you come and select this. Can you see? If you want four hours, four times per hour, you select this. So let's say we actually just want to replicate between Monday and Thursday. So what I would do, I will select everything. I will come and drag. Make sure everything is selected and I will say none. Now my, my, my company says we, we want to replicate Mondays 
from 8, from 12 noon, are you getting me? From 12 noon to 6, from Mondays through Thursday. So I will come here, I will select, is that 12 noon? That's 12 a.m. I will push it down. It says to what? 6. Is that 6 there? I'm at 6 now, right? So I push it down to Thursday. So that is 12 a.m. to what? From Mondays through what? And the replication should happen twice per what? Hour. Within this, from, when it's 12, it will two times. 1 o'clock, two times. 2 o'clock, two times per hour. So I will click two twice per hour. That's all. And you click OK. So replication to this server will happen every what? Every hour, how many times? Twice. From Mondays to Thursdays, 6, 12 a.m. to what? 6 a.m. <laughs> now, do you guys remember I talked about universal group membership catching? Whereby, if you enable this, it will allow the server to catch the users. Are you getting me? It will allow the, when you when you log in in Wildfish Brand, that it will cache your account. So that next time you want to log in, you don't need to always contact the server. You can now automatically log in because your credentials has been cached to the local server. So we cannot check this as well. Uh, that is your objects, your security settings. If you want to change them, your attributes. Okay, I just want to close. I don't want to mess up with that. I'll click apply and I'll click on OK. Now, let's go to the server. This is the server now. Okay? We can double click on the NTDS settings of the server. We go to property. Now, let's go to connection. This is where you have, the, you, you'll be able to see which, which, this, which server this server is connected with in terms of replication. Are we together? Okay? Of course, these are the objects, your security settings, if you want to allow objects and all that. Then let's go to the first site here. Right click, go to properties. Sorry. Go to the NTDS settings. This is, you can also change schedules on your main site as well, and the objects and all the other options. Now, you know, you saw here, there is a uh, subnet. Did you see subnet here? Now, subnet is where you put in the IP address you want the replication to happen. So for me to type a subnet, add a subnet, I will click on subnet, I will right click, and I will say new subnet. Then I will need to point the subnet to the actual site that is represented within the Active Directory site and services. So uh, my subnet is actually 192.168.1.1. Dot zero slash what? 24. Then it's going to ask me, select the site object for this prefix, meaning which site is having this what? IP. IP. I will say my main office and I'll click OK. Are you seeing it? So that's your site object. So you can always come here and go to your site objects. Sorry. Go to your site objects and you'll be able to see your replication, which subnet is connected to and which site is linked to. Then this is where you have your IP. Are you seeing your IP? Now currently, your IP is where you now have your what? Your communication. Huh? Between the computer systems. Currently, you only have one site link, which is what? The default site link. You can also use SMTP to what? Replicate. SMT is also another IP protocol that you can use for replication. But we're using IP for now. Now, if you notice on my IP, it says cost 100%. Replication at every what? 100 and what? Okay, so what I will do now, I will come in here, right click, go to properties. Now, did you see here? It says this is your default site link. Remember your default site link? It's your head, your main server, right? Now, according to this default site link here, it says sites in this link is what? D 
default first site, which is our main server, and this main office, which we logically created. But I only want site replication to go to the main office. Let's say, for example, let, let's create another site. Let's come here. Let's go to sites. New sites. Let's say a branch dash office. Hmm? Uh, let's say branch Wafish Bay is uh, WB. Huh? Let's say branch WB dash office. That's Wafish Bay. So we we'll, we we'll link it here now. Then we we'll click OK. Are you getting me? So what I want to do now, I want to only replicate. I want my this site to replicate to only the branch office. I will take out the rest of the sites. So I will go to the transport, which is the intersite transport. Do you guys remember intrasite and intersite? Huh? Remember intersite is what is replicating from what two bridgehead servers. Is that not correct? Intrasite is what within two domain controllers of the same domain. So what I'm going to, because it's transitive, so I'm going to click on IP settings, come to sites, I'll right click, I'll go to properties. Now, did you see that, remember when we created the site, I linked all of them to the what? The default site. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take everybody out. Remove. 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 I only want replication to go to where? Branch what? Office, and I will say what? Add. Are we together? Now it says, what is the cost? I will say the cost is what? Remember, the higher the cost, of course, the higher the cost, the lesser bandwidth. Are you getting me? The higher the cost, the lesser bandwidth. The lower the cost, the more, the more bandwidth. Now, this is your default settings. You can also come here and change as well your replication. Are you getting me? Huh? This is now you're changing your replication for what? The movement of data now between the servers. Are we together? Okay, so that's where you now, you say replication not available. Replication is only available from Mondays. So we'll come and put all none here. Then we'll select 12 noon from to 6 through Thursday. Replication is available. So that is the time replication is available. Because you want it to also be scheduled with the time of your, of your, site, com your, uh, your site communication as well. Huh? So we click OK. So that is it there. That's your object, security settings. So we click on apply. We can also change the settings. Huh? Every 180 hours is how many hours? Huh? That's 180, uh, 180 minutes is how many hours? So every three hours. So, but we ask for every hour. So we put what? 60 what? Minutes. So we put apply. It says site link object must be linked to what? Two sites. That is one of the problems. Because you cannot just replicate to only one person. It has to be linked to two. So what we need to do, we now say, okay, main office. Then we click apply. We click OK. So guys, that is your site replication we are just set so we can add another ip here are you getting me we can create a new site link you guys remember site link site link is where you link two servers together so i will create a new site link are you getting me i call it um domain link uh, sites let me say read only domain site rod Read, yeah, read all. Oh. Read only domain sites. I want you to go to branch office and main office. Okay, that is another site as well. Are you getting me? You can see the attributes, it automatically takes the default. You can also change the settings. Are you but you only have this default site link because this site link is working. Are you getting me? This one works, right? Because this one is coming from your what? Your main, your main server system. If you're adding another site link, you must make sure it's coming from where? You have another server that is added on this computer system. A domain. That re the domain must reside there and has a site. That's how you add another... Uh, uh, when you add a server to an existing domain, it will ask you, do you want to create a new site or you have an existing site? 
Now, remember we talked about site bridge. So if you right click here, you can create new site bridge. Now, site bridge is whereby you link two sites together. Are you getting me? So replication, when replication gets to that site, it moves to the other site as well. So currently, I can give this name uh, site bridge one. Then I'm linking these two sites because these are the only two default sites I have. Then I can link them together. So let's say I can call this one uh, site hybrid. And um, it says, okay, these are the you see, automatically took these two sites, right? Those are the two sites I have recently. So this site bridge will now replicate to those two sites. So now I'm going to right click on the site property. I can always remove add, change, and all of that. Are we together? So guys, that is um, that is all within the site server systems. I can show you for now. Now, if you come to the server, you see the server here. Do you see the servers? Huh? Remember we talked about the site bridge head. Huh? The bridge head server, sorry. So if I have four, if I have four servers in this domain, let's say in this site I have four servers, I will click on servers, come to one of the servers, right click, go to property, you will notice here, it will ask me which of the server transport I want to use. Are you getting me? I will say, okay, this server is a bridgehead server for the following transport. I will come here and I will put IP and I will put IP here. Are you getting me? I will put okay. So if I have more servers here, I will now have to determine which of my servers will be acting as what? A bridgehead what? Server. Remember, the server has to be what? On the active directory what? Domain. Are we together? Huh? Remember the other one, we only just add it to an existing domain. So it's not a domain, it's just a member server. If we install active directory, you see MCSE here. We also have the, our server call, we also have server two listed here as well. So we have two servers. Then it becomes intra-site. Okay guys, I think um,